Hello, uh, today I'm going to show you a new menu I've been working on. It's a material menu and I think it's really really improved um, the material creation and editing experience for Blender. Um, and before I get into that I'm going to complain a little bit and show you kind of what prompted me to create this menu in the first place. Um, so for something as simple as creating a copy of a material in Blender, it's kind of a multiple step convoluted process. So let's say I have this diffuse, I have to make a new slot, oops, then I have to go oh, back to the diffuse, rename it to something else like 01. And then I have to go down here to the new slot, bring this up, and then click here and uh, oh, I've lost my other diffuse, so actually I need to click the plus sign. There we go. Now we have a diffuse 1 and 001. So that's a little bit confusing to me and um, a bit too much clicking around for my uh, workflow. So what I've got here is a shift V. You can now pick any material. Let's say we got this uh, uh, glow, copy it, and now we have a copy right under that original, and we can rename this to whatever we want. All right, so that's the first thing. There's things like that. Um, there's also this remove slot button that works in edit mode because um, regularly, you know, if we want to make a new slot, we can make new slots in edit mode, but if we want to remove a slot, it says no. You. So we have to switch to object mode, remove that slot, and then switch back to edit mode, which doesn't make any sense. It's not consistent because we can add, but we can't subtract. So anyway, I've made a little script that lets us remove slots in edit mode. Okay, and we can make new materials here. We can copy them, delete them. Oh yeah, that's another convoluted process to just to delete a material. You have to do this thing and then you have to uh, make sure it has zero users and then reopen blur and it's, it's really a pain so um, anyway back to that so that that's the some of the nice little scripts built into there we can select different things switch them out here just like normal and the cool thing about this is that it's a pop-up menu so if I'm in full screen mode if I go control up I can just hit shift V and get in here and edit and change my materials and have full control over my materials without having to go back into these side menus. And I can just bring it up and get out of it really easily. Um, the other thing you might notice is, is there's this color picker here and it says vertex color. So the vertex color stuff is designed to work with these, these materials that have a V at the end of them, like Glossy V, Diffuse V, Glow V, and that just means that we're using vertex colors on these materials. So um, the way this works, it's, it's really, really efficient and handy for, for making colors. So anyway, let's say I have Glossy V, I'll double click this whole thing, Shift V, and hit, uh, let's pick a color and hit Fill Color. So this only, this Fill Color only works on the V materials like these, but um, you might be saying like, okay, that's pretty normal. We can do that with any other material, but the where the, the V stuff comes in or the vertex color comes in is we can pick certain areas and fill certain areas to different colors all while we're still on the same glossy V material. And the cool thing about that is that, let me go to render view. Uh, all right, so let me change this to white back on the floor. So the cool thing is we have all the settings for that V, glossy V over here. So I can change these all to be metal. At the same time, I can change the shininess of them. I can change the roughness of them. Actually, let me, let me set this up better. Oh, here we go. So I can change the roughness like that. I'm 
just duplicating these and let's say I want this one to be green, this one to be blue. Oops, this one over here to be blue. And because these are all on the same layer, I can adjust the, the settings for all of them at the same time. So you can see how this is could be pretty powerful, especially if you have a scene with a ton of different colors in it. Um, and you can just set these vertex colors rather than having to make a thousand different copies of that one material. And the other cool thing is, you know, since they're all linked together, it, that saves you some time from having to go into each individual material, changing the settings or copying the settings. We can also copy this, this glossy V, so we can copy glossy V and make it, uh, you know, with different settings and have a whole other set of, of colors. And I can assign these to the glossy V copy, and make it like white. And maybe these ones I want to all to be metal, fully metallic, and highly uh, reflective, low roughness. So they're kind of like a metal now. I need uh, more light in here. And this is still fully editable, so we can change the color of one piece of metal, change the other piece here. We could change these to be um, glass. Let's see. Switch this to glass V. Thicken these up. Um, what else can we do? We could we could also make this glow. Glow. We can set individual faces to be different materials and different colors. Um, I hope this is making sense and starting to see the, the power of uh, the power of V. Um, the other thing, oh yeah, yeah. So we've got also vertex color. So if I have two vertices or this edge selected change only that edge. Now I've got this nice gradient. I can ch change each of these corners to be a different color. So we got a lot of control here and it's also very very lightweight so because you know compared to using an image texture this is very quick performance and low low memory, low file size, because if you think about it, we, we basically have four pixels here, one, two, three, four, and each pixel or vert has a different color assigned to it, versus if we were trying to represent the same um, gradient here with an image texture, that would be, you know, we need to have a super high resolution image to get this nice smooth, um, transition. So this would be like 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels here. So, you know, especially when we're doing more complicated stuff, um, this vertex color could be really useful. Um, so that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any um, suggestions for this menu. I'm going to keep, keep working on it over time. And But I mean, so far I'm I think it's a pretty big improvement over um, the standard Blender way of doing materials and um, you can grab it in the, the link in the video. Okay, see ya.